by, like I said, scrutinizingly studying Srila Prabhupada's books, looking up each and every word in the dictionary, understanding the syntax of his sentences, how the words are related to one another, how they influence one another, how the topic is described from numerous angles and points of view. Hmm? Prabhupada is a master at presenting Krishna consciousness. Huh? We're just amateurs in comparison with him. But what he was doing was, when he would translate, he would have four or five different commentaries by the great spiritual masters in Sanskrit in front of him. And he would take the best from each and combine it into his purports. In just the right words, he had this big thick dictionary, the Oxford student, or Oxford Collegiate Dictionary, big thick thing about like that. Huh? And he would look up the words in the dictionary until he got just the right word to mean precisely what he intended it to mean. How are we going to understand what Prabhupada intended unless we also use the dictionary to find out the precise meaning of the word in each particular sentence? And because my god brothers did not do this, they did not duplicate Prabhupada's teaching, and now they're changing the books. Changing the books. They're finished. They're finished. They're going off the cliff. Instead of trying to duplicate Prabhupada's teaching, now they're changing it. So there's no hope. So the highly developed soul always remains satisfied in himself by realizing himself. Realizing. What does realizing mean? Anybody? To understand something? No. Clearly. No. Realizing. Experience. No. No. It has. No. Realizing means to bring into reality or manifestation. To become something. To actually be something. Huh? Realizing means, in other words, to realize that you're a devotee of the Lord is different from thinking you're a devotee of the Lord or imitating a devotee of the Lord or just saying you're a devotee of the Lord. To realize that you're a devotee of the Lord is to really become a devotee of the Lord. To have an intimate, eternal, transcendental, personal, direct relationship with the Lord. Okay, so Prabhupada says here, he remains always satisfied in himself by realizing himself as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord. That means he actually becomes the eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord. He doesn't just think about it. He doesn't just say prayers and do rituals about it. He actually becomes that. Try to understand. He has a real relationship. It's not just theoretical. It's not just words. It's not just theology or philosophy. He really is the eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord. It's not an act. It's not a play. It's his real life. He puts his life and soul into being the Lord's servant. Uh, this is self-realization. It's not just theoretical, not just abstract. You can't just be a spectator. Huh? I get the feeling so many, we talked about this on the forum this week. Huh? Sometimes I get the feeling that everybody is just like spectators, you know, just watching us on TV or something. Uh, it's, like, it's like this is a reality show, right? <laughs> the devotees in Chile. Oh, what are they going to do next? Huh? No, oh, now the kitten got kidnapped. <laughs> this is soap opera, huh? Everybody's watching for the next episode. Uh, the next episode of the drama. What outrageous thing is Babaji going to say this week? <laughs> <laughs> right? And it's like the couch 
this couch potato, you know, Monday morning quarterbacks, you know, Monday morning watch the watch the satsang on YouTube, huh? But what crazy thing is he going to say now? What outrageous claim is he going to make now? Huh? What impossible instruction is he going to give this time? Okay, this week's impossible instruction is to take one verse in Bhagavad Gita, any one that you like, and look up every word in the verse in the Sanskrit dictionary on our site. Huh? And look up every word in the translation and purport in a good dictionary. Uh, Dictionary.com is good if you're online. Look up every single word and use that word in a sentence of your own design that means exactly the same way that it's used in the text. And I guarantee you, when you go back and you read that again, your eyes will get as big as saucers and because you're going to see something in here that you could never have possibly seen without doing that work. Huh? I'm a big fan of the old saying, you get what you pay for. If you try to read through Bhagavad Gita like it's some kind of a novel, then all you're going to get is a couple of days of interesting speculation. It's not going to really impact you. It's not going to really affect your life. But if you study Bhagavad Gita scrutinizingly, uh, look up every single word, then you have a very good chance of duplicating the message of Bhagavad Gita. And if you do that, your life will be changed forever. I promise. Uh, well, maybe you don't want that. Maybe you don't want to change your life. Maybe you think your life is great just the way it is. Well, then what are you doing here? Huh? This satsang is part of an esoteric school. And the aim of this esoteric school is that we want to get out of this material world. So if you don't want to get out of this material world, if you think this material world is a nice place and you want to stay here forever, then please don't watch our videos. Uh, these are only for people who want to get out of here, who are tired of this material life, who are tired of suffering and humiliation and being made wrong and being defeated again and again and again uh, by maya. Uh, maya means what is not, what does not really exist, the material energy. So if you want the real thing, if you want eternal existence, eternal happiness and bliss, uh, perfect knowledge, hmm, beautiful love affair with Krishna, if you want all these things, then, okay, stick around and hear us, because we're going to give our uh, teachings are just going to become more and more outrageous. <laughs> this is only the second chapter. Huh? Wait till we get to the fifth chapter. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, and Bhagavad Gita itself is just the introduction to Vedic spiritual life. This is just the beginner's stage. Huh? Although everything is here, and if you know it, then you can perceive it in the words of Bhagavad Gita. But the real thing is Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, those are the real, those are the graduate and the postgraduate studies. Uh, so everything is there in Bhagavad Gita, but it's in a summary form, it's in a hidden form. Bhagavad Gita is like the cliff notes to the Vedic teaching, the esoteric teaching. So everyone should study Bhagavad Gita very carefully. Then you have a chance of actually realizing this knowledge, actually duplicating this knowledge. But that's the first step in self-realization. So, you have any questions?
Come on, try to ask a question that's in the context. I'm warning you, if you don't ask a question, I'm going to start talking again. <laughs> Does this process of looking everything up get faster over the years? Do we have to do it less? Because uh, it takes a long time. <laughs> yeah, it gets, it gets much quicker. Because right now you don't know 